I don't agree with Nick on that because the government, of course, does provide money to the students when they go to university and then expects them to pay back if they're in well-paid jobs. And the economic evidence is still pretty clear that, on average, being a graduate is a, going to earn you more than being a non-graduate. And setting aside the economic gains, just the broadening of your horizons, the kind of experience you have for those three years, sets you up for life. So I'm a believer in more people going to university. I think it's worked well for Britain and it's worked well for individuals. Of course, there have to be a range of other options as well. But those young people are getting good A-level grades today and are going forward to university. They've got a very good chance of three years that will transform their lives for the better. Yes, and I don't want to rain on the parade. Good luck to them. But you, you say it's good for those who pass. But a recent report showed that there's a third of graduates who are in jobs where they didn't even need the degree in the first place. How can you justify that? Well, during their 20s, especially since the crash, there has been a slower process of younger people getting promotion and moving on and up in the jobs ladder. However, in a tougher jobs market, it actually makes going to university and being a graduate even more important. And a lot of those jobs that are called non-graduate jobs, when you look into it closely, there's quite a debate. Maybe the jobs themselves have become more technically demanding. Maybe the regulations are more onerous. Maybe the level of equipment and kit you have to deal with is more sophisticated. There does seem to be a process, not just in Britain, but around Western countries, where jobs do become graduate jobs. And that is not necessarily a bad thing. That may tell us something about how economies advance. It wasn't that long ago that the fees were £1,000. They're now... £9,000. Is the education nine times better then? And what are the interests that these students are charged on the money? Well, I'll be, I'll be frank about this. There were lots of reasons for putting in the fees at 9000 And as you said in your introduction, I was involved in that. It was partly that we could see that universities had been underfunded and students had been in crowded seminars in dilapidated buildings with insufficient access to modern equipment when they were doing vocational and technical courses and we but needed to boost the resource going to universities and there was no way any government was going to do that by putting in more public spending. But the 6%, how comfortable are you with that, Lord Willits? That's a lot of cash for these students. Well, it's, it's, of course, it's not cash for the students. The students don't pay up front. Well, what really not matters, up front, but ultimately, let's not dance no, on the head of a uh, pin, come on. No, what matters is that graduates pay back 9% of their earnings above £21,000 a year. That is the crucial figure. It means that for many graduates, indeed, it's the case that above a high threshold, their income tax rate, because it's all taken out through PAYE, it's not like a mortgage or a credit card debt, is 29%, not 20%. That is indeed a big change in the British labour market, but it is nothing like young people having overdrafts or credit card debt. It's not that kind of transaction. Uh, Lord, Lord, so, lastly, some of these uh, vice chancellors, Lord Willits, are earning, they're almost like Premier League football players, 451,000 mm. for someone, the vice chancellor at the University of Bath, figures of hundreds of thousands of pounds. Is it sustainable? Is it justifiable? Well, I can see that some of those examples are egregious and I can understand the, the furore that's broken out. But let's keep this in proportion. If and Andrew Adonis, who started this, if there's 100, there's about 100 vice chancellors in English universities. If Andrew Adonis thinks they're each earning £100,000 too much, that's £10 million. The fees bring £11 billion a year into our universities to educate our students. Right. To deprive them of that because you think £10 million is badly spent would be absolutely letting the how, tail wag the dog. It's not proportionate. How much, too, how much is too much? Everybody seems well, to have their pay compared to the uh, Prime Minister. Should they be paid more than her? Well, of course, universities are not part of the public sector. They're, they're charitable institutions. They right. have to have rigorous assessment of what vice-chancellors are paid. But the level of vice-chancellor pay is not a reason right. for changing a system that is delivering to over a million but, students and bringing billions of pounds into our higher you education. you brought the word egregious into the conversation, Lord Willits. Mm -hmm. What figure is egregious? Well... One of the good features of our universities is they're <laughs> autonomous bodies, so I'm not going to tell universities All right, we'll what do it their a different vice chancellors pay Is £250,000 egregious? But I'm, one of the reasons why our universities well, are yes high no, quality really, isn't it? is that we do not run them from Whitehall. There are countries where politicians decide pay rates in universities, and thank heavens England is not yeah. one of them. But it was you who brought the word egregious in. There must be a yeah. figure. Do I go to yeah. 300,000? Well, well, people like will all have their personal views, but I'm not going to... I think it's quite important for our universities that these pay rates are determined properly in professional remuneration arrangements, but I don't think it's for me to tell universities 
and to right. comment on what individual pay rates are, because I think universities are autonomous and that should be respected. Lord Willits, thank you for your time this evening. Let's thank turn you. to the thank you. Turn to the National Union, Union of Students now. You believe effectively that all fees should be scrapped. Am I right in saying that? That's Which, correct. You know, is a, is, is a noble, uh, noble initiative. How are we going to pay for it? Look, what I, first of all, I want to congratulate all the uh, students who've got A-level results today. Well I think said. it's really, really good and really well important said. that they're coming to our universities. Unfortunately, they're going to be, the reality is they're going to be saddled with lots and lots of debt. Now, as David Willett's made very clear, clearly there was a problem with the underfunding of universities. Now, somebody has to pay for it. And I com it's completely unacceptable to say that this has to be forced on the individual students. Okay. Generations of young people who are now set to be worse off than their parents. Right. This should be paid through progressive taxation. Tell me how that works. The idea that there's no money left was blown open at this election. OK, we saw Theresa May saying that there's absolutely no money left and then managed to find quite a lot of money for the DUP. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the conversation has now shifted. A lot of people are seeing young people set, off to be, set up to be worse off than their parents. And there are a, a whole load of options that we can look into. But I think the issue that we're facing now is that the government aren't even willing to concede that there is a problem with the system. They're going guns blazing as if this is a, everything is absolutely fine and it's absolutely OK that, people, that young people are coming out of university with higher and higher debts. We don't think that that's right and we think that the um, society as a whole should pay for higher education as a public good. Come back to you in a minute, Mr. Doka. Let's bring uh, Sir David Bell in just to remind everyone you're Vice Chancellor of the University of Reading. We hear today it's a buyer's market. You're at the coalface. How accurate is that description? Students have got much more choice than they've ever had before. Uh, the removal of uh, caps on the numbers of students that universities could take has made the system more competitive. I actually think that's good for students because they have much more choice. So yes, it has felt like a competitive situation. Is it good for universities? Situation. I think it is good for universities, really? yes, because I, I, I think... I thought they were scrabbling around to get No, people. I think it actually enables universities to think about what it is that they offer prospective students. Students are more demanding, they're more selective. And therefore, it's important that we do provide what it is that they expect to get a good education. Um, I was trying to get Lord Willits to talk about a figure that might be egregious. I understand you're paid in the region of £264,000 per annum. Is that egregious? Well, it's not for me to judge, because the decisions about my pay are not made by me. They're made by independent members of the university governing body. The same situation as applies around the country mm. and it's for those lay members it of governing out? bodies How it's it for them out? to make the decisions about what they think is appropriate but I, I, I'm interested in this, Sir David, because how has it worked out? Reading is, is a high-flying university. You're 27th, no question about it, so well done. But if we look at the pay packets, you're considerably higher up there. You're effectively Steve Bruce of Aston Villa earning the money of Arsene Wenger of Arsenal. Why? Well, as I say, I don't think it's for me to judge what's an appropriate level of remuneration. That's for the independent members of university governing bodies to come to that decision and they will take account of a variety of factors including the relative pay of vice chancellors compared to others around the world. They'll take account of the responsibilities we have and don't forget and we are running major enterprises. You, you, in you are, you are. Just, just finally, we've studied some of the courses available, £9,000 to study food marketing at Reading University. What's the student going to learn? Well, students learn actually a lot that's valuable. The food industry in this country uh, employs over two and a half million people. There are great jobs available in marketing around the food industry. And that's something I want to bring you in, Mr. Dugger. We heard uh, again from uh, David, Lord Willits, that with the pressure now in the job market, actually young people have to go and get these degrees or they're really disadvantaged, they're really handicapping themselves. Again, you're at the cold face of that part. Would you agree with that? Well, I think I would encourage a lot of people to go to university. but actually, Not everyone, though. But sure. it's about options. And this is the reality. Is, you know, National Union of Students represents over 7 million students across higher education, but also in further education. And further education are currently in the majority. But I think many people within NUS would agree that they aren't often seen on a par with higher education. So I think it's really important that young people come out of um, school and they have options which are valued by society um, as equal but students struggling in some cases to pay these fees, to pay back these, uh, these loans. Are you going to give me a figure that's egregious? Do you think vice chancellors should be making this sort of money? Look, I'm not going to get drawn into Why will nobody number. give me but this? I've tried say, so hard. What I would say, though, is that it, it is quite difficult for students to stomach to see some of these very, very high figures at a time when they're having to take on a lot of um, okay. debt, at a time when actually the vice chancellors have done very little to stop us going down this road. So I think that issue needs to be dealt with, but it's not the only issue and won't solve the current funding crisis of, in higher education. Amadi Doko, thank you. Good luck with your studies, of course, Sir David, thank you, and good luck with uh, getting the students into your university.